Hi, and this I guess is going to be part two of my mass transit computer category. This is the first major tower I I made. Actually, I, th I made one before this, but this was this one was really powerful at the time. Uh, she has for peripherals. That's a two gigabyte SCSI Jazz drive. That is a quad speed smart and friendly SCSI CD-ROM. That's a 12 gigabyte Seagate ultra wide SCSI DAT drive. They're running 1.44, 1.22 floppy combo. And that was the original backup right there, the uh, T1000. That was uh, the first type of backup that I used on this and then of course I have a, a zip uh, 250 originally used to be a zip 100 kind of cool for peripherals now here that's a, just a bunch of fans to help make it run a little cooler um, and then what we have here is we have three hard drives um, this one's a 15 gig and these two are 20 gigs it's running a P, Intel P2 500 megahertz CPU. This is an iWheel uh, motherboard with a with twin SCSI controllers, a wide and an ultra wide. Now up in the top, you'll see that I have a bay for more hard drives. Originally, I had four here. Uh, only one survived. Uh, it's a quantum 2 gig. I think they all were about 2 gigs. Between 1.4 and 1.6 gigabyte hard drives. I built this machine, I think, in mid to late 1999. This right here is a clip that I need to attach an, another uh, um, a female connector onto it so that it'll plug in. And then that'll allow me to use uh, SCSI external device now this is kinda cool this right here is the ATI Rage Fury Max Pro the 128 megabyte video card at the time it was one of the fastest cards out there <clears throat> it um... it was a dual CPU card and uh, we, I mean, it, it was it was overkill for what this machine was trying to do. But you know, every once in a while during lunch or something, we'd play games on the system, and it was a great card for that. Below that, the second card down is an Audigy Sound Blaster Audigy. Um, the nice thing about this Audigy is that it is running a internal uh, firewire which at the time that that was the fastest way you could move data video data and it, that was really important for us in the graphics studio uh, and so this is pretty much the basics of the system it also ran this card but i'm running pro I, I, you know the weird thing about i will this is a 3com uh, pci network card I will products originally were great, I thought. I bought several motherboards, never really had too much problems with them. This board, um, though, was it was stable, but it was hard to configure. If you didn't configure it correctly, it was just a real bear. And um, it, it, you have memory address conflicts in IRQ complex because there's so much going on with this motherboard um, that it became very very difficult to set anything up in this system and I don't know what I've done something I've added I don't remember adding anything <coughs> excuse me has caused this system to fail on the uh, network card so you know, I, I'm not putting this on the network anymore. I'm really just building this back up just as a museum piece. So I don't really care too much about the network. Uh, this one will never see the network again, I'm pretty sure. I mean, if I do want to do it, I'll try to find another network card that's a little bit more passive. Um, 
but pretty much this this is how she is right now and I am running let's see if I can get over there I am installing Windows 98 again on it because like I said I was having a lot of problems um, with the network card and I just couldn't get it to free up an IRQ and, and I remember the many years ago how hard it was for me to finally find a memory address I think it was a memory address problem and it took me I mean it took me just hours and hours of just constantly changing memory addresses until I found one that was free and you know I just don't want to go through that again because I'm not gonna put this on the network so I just pulled the card and I'm reinstalling Windows from scratch and uh, as you can see I'm only five percent done it just started as we started talking uh, here so I got a little bit more to go. Let's see what happens if she's uh, logged in and ready to go. Here's the back of it. Pretty good view of the back. Got two fans up here at the top. And then this plate here slides in and it locks in both these plates. This one and this one here. Uh, and then there's the power supply. It's 300 watt power supply by Antec. Uh, it's running a PS2 keyboard and mouse. Um, two COM ports, printer port. And there's that ultra scuzzy clip I told you about right there. There's the Rage. Uh, Fury Max 128 and there's the Oddigy and over there's the Firewire that's pretty much the back of the machine and then this is kind of what it looks like with the case on Here's the boot up screen. Okay, kind of crazy about the boot up screen because it takes a, such a long time for the onboard SCSI controllers to read anything. That was one of the things that was a drawback on the system. It took forever. And uh, you, I couldn't really find a way to get it to go any faster through that phase. So I'm getting close on the Windows 98, and excuse me for the flicker of the frame rate, I guess these older cards, they just don't know how to do frame rates like uh, the new ones do. So we're getting close. Like I said, I had to completely reinstall Windows again because I just could not get the network card to work. Um, and I knew, I just remember thinking back, uh, it was a memory address, and I, I just didn't want to go through that trouble. So it looks like I've got about 17 more minutes, and I will come back to it in a bit. I kind of wanted to show this because uh, right up here, well, went a little bit too fast, but if you paused it, you could probably see all the different IRQs that it had that it was being that were being used just making it kind of crazy one of the reasons why it's so difficult when you run into problems with add-on cards okay the moment of truth Okay, I wanted to go over the whole process again because you missed a few things and I wanted you to see this, especially how long it takes for it to boot up. Now I know in the plug and play bias, um, I can get those uh, to, to move faster, but I have not been able to figure out how to do it in the SCSI section of the bias controller. Um, so no matter what I do, it, it, it runs through each device and it takes this long to find them. I can make it go a little bit faster. Um, like I said, in the, uh, 
standard plug and play bias, but in the SCSI bias, I have not been able to figure out how to do that. Now, you didn't really, because it moves so fast, but it flashed for a second just the um, huge amount of IRQs that are being loaded into the system and being harnessed onto that motherboard, which is one of the reasons why the 3Com PCI network card is colliding. I'm having a hell of a time configuring it, and I remember from last time how bad it was. And I just, I don't think I'm going to put this on the network. It's not that big of a deal to me. So, in, I mean, one day I probably will break down and go through it just to get it back to the way it was. But for now, I just really kind of wanted to go through it and get it all redone and get it all working again. I think also I'm just running stock drivers from Windows 98 and that makes it even more difficult. Somewhere I have the disk, the original disk for those that 3Com network card which actually allows me to alter memory addresses and then I think it also had a tool that checked for a free spot and that really made it so much easier for me to install it so instead of fighting the card I'm gonna look for those discs it's my favorite part So anytime you heard that, you knew you got your video, you have your audio card working perfectly, uh, which I saved you guys the hurt of what I had to go through to get this all configured. Uh, I really, I, I've been at this for about three days, maybe longer, on this project, getting it uh, to boot up correctly and work stable with everything going and the only thing I couldn't get to work right now was the network card but I'll get back to that later like I said I don't think I'll ever I don't think she'll ever see the network again uh, she may but for now I really just wanted to get her up and running get her uh, operational just like she was and um, hey I uh, like always thanks for watching let me show you this completed case. Hang on one sec. Okay, here's the final project. Looks pretty nice. This is the back end of it. Side panel is on. And then we have all the peripherals and that is where the network card went and like I said eventually I'll get that going but for right now it's not a big deal to me and uh, like always you guys thank you for watching um, I enjoyed even it really it took me three days and all my spare time to get this machine back online 100% and yes all those peripherals do work now and I've got discs for everything uh, I think the let me look for those. Yeah, here's the jazz drive disc. Um, I have others, but I mean, again, it's really just for show, so I'm only going to keep one. I'll probably sell the others. These are not user machines anymore. I mean, I don't really use them. They're definitely not going to use this one. This is not going to be my my gamer. I mean, honestly, once you once you get into the early Pentiums, there's no reason to use those as gamers. For me, it's the DOS box uh, legacy systems that I'm really interested in for gaming. Like a good 386 plays uh, some of the greatest games ever perfectly. And I'm going to build me a, a, a DOS machine out of one of my 386s. I think I even have one already. It's an AT&T. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. Again, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Uh, I appreciate everybody viewing. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Thanks again.